It's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tim Jeanette. Hey everyone, Tim Jeanette, the Metal Meeple here. And in this video, we're taking a look at a game called Tumbling Dice. It comes in this big box. Uh, this is the Eagle Griffin version, came out in 2015. Originally, it came out in 2004. And uh, throughout the different versions, it was designed by Carrie Grayson, Randy Nash, and Rick Sewid. Uh, it's for one to four players, takes about 30 minutes. And essentially, it's like shuffleboard where uh, you're rolling dice down these stairs, essentially, and you get points based on the facing of the die and whichever stair that you're farthest on from one to four. So four times six is the maximum amount of points, and you do that a bunch of times, and whoever has the most points at the end wins. So let me show you how it plays, what it comes with, and we'll come back and I'll tell you what I think. So here we go, here is the tumbling dice board. As you can see, it's pretty big, my hand here. Um, you do have to assemble it before you play it each time unless you just leave it play, put up. You've got these little stands here. And each level uh, requires you to put a different level peg in it. It doesn't really take that long to put together. Uh, all this is put together right now just to speed up the review, but I do leave these black pegs in because I can fit them into the box uh, without taking those out. Anyway, the game comes with a ton of dice. You've got four colors of dice, and you're going to pick whatever color you want. I'm going to be blue. And then you choose the turn order for the beginning or roll or however you want. And then you're going to start by placing a die on this launch pad. You can roll it off as long as it touches this, but essentially you place it on here anywhere you want and flick it, and then it's going to land. And then the next player is going to go however they want. Obviously, you can knock each other around. If it lands on this zero board, you remove it. And let's just see. Aha! Anyway, you keep going until the, all the dice are on the board or have been rolled anyway. Uh, all these would get removed. And then you score based on which level of the board you're on and according to the face. So in this case, you would get. Let me see if I can zoom that in. You would get one times five, and then the next one you would get, obviously blue would get two times three, yellow get one times two, et cetera, et cetera, all the way to four times whatever the die face is. Those obviously being the harder ones to land on. And that's pretty much most of the game. Um, each player is gonna roll all their dice, you know, just like I showed you in turn order, and then you score all your points together. And that's a one round. You play the game for four rounds. Each round you switch turn order based on how many points you have. So the highest player is always going to go first. You know, if the third round comes and you're in the lead total points, you're always going to go first because it gives you the uh, handicap of having them out there longer so they can be knocked around by other dice. There are a couple variants to the game. You could play where instead of multiplying each face of the die, you just add it together. So in this case, it'd be five plus one. That works for younger kids. You can also play um, a set amount of points so instead of playing a number of rounds. You could play until somebody breaks 300 points and then you just finish that round and whoever has the most wins. Uh, there's a couple other things. I think the Kickstarter had more. One thing I did like that the Kickstarter had uh, was they included this purple pummeler. Um, this obviously is not the Kickstarter edition and I added this on my own. But you get a D8 and you always give this to the player with the lowest amount of points each round and they get that as a fifth die. And they can roll it whenever they want. Uh, most people end up using it like on their third or fourth or fifth die. Uh, you know, so it's pretty cool. It's just a neat little handicap thing. We did add some more dice to the game. Obviously, you can add whatever you want. Um, I've got some more dice in the mail to ma match the translucency of these. I feel like if you add like opaque dice and translucent dice, these are kind of light and these would knock them around. But do however you want. I guess you can use that as a handicap. But anyway, so at the end of four rounds, whoever has the most points is the winner. This game is awesome. I didn't think I would like it, actually, from seeing it originally, but then the more I thought about it, I was like, I love dexterity games. Why am I not trying this? So I picked it up. We played it a bazillion times, and every time, every single person I show it to is trying to buy a copy or has bought a copy. I mean, it's just because some of them aren't gamers, and they're like, man, they look at the price, and it is kind of high for a retail cost. Um, but, I mean, you can find it on sale and things like that. But it is pricey. However, it does come with really good components. 
I think it's um, a little bit different quality than the original ones. The original ones I think were the waxier on top and stuff. And this one has a painted surface. And I actually kind of like that a little better. I've played the other version and maybe the dice slide a little bit more or I remember it or felt that way. And this one, it feels like there's a little bit more grip on the surface. You may or may not like that, but essentially uh, I think the components are really nice. It is thinner wood, um, but I think it you know works just fine, except for I did have a little bit of warping on one of the boards. You probably can't tell on the video and I don't think it's really that big of a deal, but apparently other people experience the same issue pretty much on the same board. So there's that. And for my copy, I actually was missing some holes in one of the, one of the boards that you put the pegs in on the bottom. Luckily, I don't really care. I just drilled new holes into it and it works fine. So no harm, no foul or whatever. But you know, if you run into that and some people or kids might get it or something may not feel comfortable with doing it or maybe their parents don't feel comfortable, that could be a problem. I don't know how widespread that is though. Worth pointing out more about the warping though. Anyway, you do have to assemble the game and it's one of those things where people might kind of juggle. Do I want to do that every time? We just leave it set up all the time. I mean, I take it places and it really is not that hard to set up and, and break down. If you're confident in it and you've done it a few times, literally 30 seconds from opening the box to popping it out because you can leave a lot of it put together in the box. So not a big deal. I would not hold that against the game if it's something you had a concern with. Um, I think it's a good game for four players. The more players, actually, I like it better. Uh, two players, it's fine, whatever, but uh, I really like playing with more players. So adding more dice, I think the game holds itself well with up to six. Past six, I mean, I've seen, I guess the the Kickstarter originally, you could buy up to eight um, players worth of dice. That might be crazy. I mean, there's so many dice on the board. Uh, one of the goals, I think, I don't know if it was met or not, came with a D10, which is even crazier. You can add all those yourself, but I think you could feel comfortable with adding two other sets of dice and having six players and play it pretty well. Now, you could probably add in the uh, purple pummeler with that. We usually do if we're playing with five or six. If we're playing with four, it's kind of like, eh, we'll, we'll leave that out, but very fun with six and i don't mind playing with a seven or eight too so uh, i think the variants are really fun i really like i said the purple pummeler is just really really fun i like the uh, the other variants i think playing to a, a set point limit will allow the games to go a little longer normally you're hitting what 100 to 150 uh in normal four round games uh, i mean you could score a lot less than that that's just what our group tends to hit about 120 uh, 100 to 120 i think uh, nah, maybe about 80 to 120. I don't know. Anyway, it's just really fun. If you like dexterity games like shuffleboard and stuff like that, maybe curling. Uh, I'm a really big fan of bocce ball. I know this is like not similar, but I just love games where you can knock opponent stuff out of the way uh, with dexterity and skill. It does have a lot of luck involved because, you know, you roll a one on that four and you're like, that's only four points instead of 24 points, which I could have had. But it's just, it's just silly fun. It really, really is a great time. And I highly recommend it to anybody, uh, at least to get a copy. Somebody in your gaming group should have this. It's just really fun. So anyway, if you have any comments, please comment below or email me at timjanette at gmail.com. Otherwise, you can follow me on social media at the handle below. And until next time, keep on rocking and rolling dice. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.